Hi there, my name is Jess Hooper and I'm an anthrozoology PhD candidate from the University of Exeter. My ongoing project, the Civet Project, is a multi-species and multi-sited ethnography following the stories of civets entangled within live animal trade. Today I'm going to be speaking about my research into the emergent Indonesian civet pet trade. Frequently described as cats, civets are in fact more closely related to mongoose, belonging to the family Viveridae, an ancient lineage of Feliformia found throughout Southeast Asia and Africa. Primarily nocturnal, solitary and arboreal, civets are difficult to study in the wild, and overall civets are a very poorly researched group of mammals. Still today, civets undergo frequent taxonomic reclassification. Essentially, they're a bit of an enigma. Much of their historic records come from anecdotal accounts from the humans who live alongside them. What we do know is that civets are mesocarnivores, relying on a complex and highly varied diet of fruit, insects, small rodents and carrion, and as such have become well adapted to anthropogenic activity, becoming pests in many areas for raiding crops and nesting in rooftops. Civets are most famous, however, for their role in civet coffee, the most expensive coffee in the world produced through the civet's digestive tract. Subsequently, the popularity of civet coffee has led to intensive caged farming and forced feeding of civets. Civet lovers clubs are social spaces for civet pet keeping enthusiasts, an emergent trend first documented in 2014 by Nyman and colleagues, who, whilst conducting conservation research in Jakarta's wildlife markets, noticed that traders were signposting prospective customers to civet lovers clubs for advice and guidance on caring for civets as pets. Yet no further research has been conducted on this community. Civet Lovers Clubs operate regionally and nationally, and the demographic is typically young men and women who are very active on social media. Civet Lovers Facebook groups, Instagram accounts, and YouTube channels are extremely popular as virtual communities where members share their experiences of civet companionship and information is posted online regarding upcoming gatherings. Local gatherings allow owners and their pet civets to meet in person, to socialize in public spaces such as parks and shopping malls, and national pet expos are hosted annually. Here, civets are entered in, into competitions where they are judged and rated on their condition, an activity not dissimilar from crufts and other domestic pet pageants. As companions, pet civets tend to be either beloved family companions or status symbols, though these categories are not mutually exclusive. Now, it may come as no surprise that my initial research plans to conduct immersive ethnography have been uh, postponed due to the pandemic. I've therefore turned to social media platforms as a gateway into online civet lovers communities. Described by Jones in 1990 as a seductive data set, the inter internet and in particular social media has been recognized by other academics, including O'Connor in 2010 and Dalsgaard in 2016, as sites of potential ethnographic investigation. Online communities are just as real as those taking place in person, and user generated content can offer intriguing insight into the homes and lives of users that may otherwise be inaccessible to researchers in person. Overall, then, I have been auditing social media sites, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube for the past 16 months. This is a process that is ongoing. Uh, the case study I'm going to share with you today is just one YouTube video from this data set. Whilst the video is in the public domain and has been viewed by more than 85,000 users, I have chosen to anonymise both the user's name and the name of the civet. I do this because the uh, information and the content that I'm going to be describing is quite emotionally distressing. Uh, as such, I would like to issue a trigger warning that what I'm about to describe can be quite upsetting, though I've not used any images or, fo or footage from the video. The following story describes a 19 minute tribute video documenting the rise and fall of a civet that I call Flo, companion to a man in his late 30s, who I will name Vickel. Flo had risen to internet fame among the civet lovers community. Vickle's YouTube channel has over 10,000 subscribers and he is active across multiple Facebook groups for various regional and national civet lovers clubs. Since Flo was purchased as a baby, Vickle has posted regular videos detailing their life together. Flo has over the years gained a celebrity-like following 
partly due to the anthropomorphized life documentary that viewers can follow, but also due to the controversial nature of her physical condition. By the time Flo was several months old, she began rapidly gaining weight. There are trends in the civet lovers community which advocate for obesity in their companion animals due to the perceived cuteness and health. Hundreds of users on Instagram post content featuring wild obese animals claiming they are well cared for, spoiled, healthy and strong. But there are also many in the community who condemn overfeeding due to the negative health implications. By the time Flo was fully grown, she was almost three times the size of the image I show here. The video I will discuss today is Flo's final video appearance in which her death is intimately filmed and shared to her 10,000 subscribers. The first 10 minutes of this montage video is a serene and upbeat reflection of Flo's upbringing. Clip by clip, Flo grows in both size and age. She is dressed in diapers and baby grows during her infancy, never caged. Rather, she wanders the house and accompanies the family on outings. In one scene, Flo visits the supermarket where she travels the aisles in the shopping cart as Vickle selects new onesies and other clothing items for her. As she gets older, Flo stops wearing clothes. Her ability to walk is now compromised by her weight and she is showered with affection from Vickle, who bathes her, cuddles her, caresses her and feeds her what looks to be human food. We watch one of her birthday celebrations as she is presented with a candle topped cake surrounded by colourful decorations. 10 minutes in, however, the footage shifts in tone. For one whole minute, we watch a concerned looking Vickle laying next to Flo's side. He cuddles her and caresses her engorged body. They both lay topless, side by side on a bed, and it becomes apparent that Flo is seriously struggling to breathe. Vickle's expression is one of bereft disbelief. He stares into nothing as his hands softly stroke her body. From the bed, we are taken abruptly to a close-up of Flo's face. Her eyes, lifeless and glazed, stare past the lens of the camera. Vickle places his fingers in her mouth and lifts her head up as if to check she is gone, an action he repeats on and on as if he is in denial of what he is seeing. For four agonising minutes, we watch Vickle sit on the floor with Flo propped up in his lap her large body resting limp across his chest. Initially, the scene is one of shock. Silently, he holds her, hugs her, looks intently into her eyes. Then a distinct moment when the realization drops. Holding Flo up, he shakes her as if to will her back to life, but her body falls backwards and he almost loses his grip as her dead weight tumbles her towards the ground. It is then that his sobs turn into inconsolable, howling wails of grief. He rolls her onto the floor in front of him. She lies face up on her back. There she lies, lifeless still, whilst to no avail, Vickle frantically attempts CPR and mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Finally, in a last attempt to find something lodged in her throat, he searches again in her mouth for a blockage, but nothing is there and the screen goes blank. We are left picturing the despairing scene of dead animal and bereft owner. The final minutes are dedicated to Flo's burial. Her body is wrapped in cloth. She is carefully placed into a freshly dug grave. The shovel lays by Vickle's side as he places one of Flo's toys at her side and then covers them both with the towel, taking care to tuck them in as if they're both going to bed for one last time before slowly and delicately covering the ground with soil. The last frames were captured sometimes later. Vickle tends to Flo's graveside and the video finally ends as we see him watering freshly growing flowers atop her final resting place. Vickle's video, so far viewed by over 85,000 people, illustrates the nuances of loss in numerous ways. Firstly, the loss of animal life bears striking resemblance to that experienced at the death of a human, which is interesting for two primary reasons. First, in Indonesia, civets are mostly either pests or commodities. Wild civets are either killed or sold into factory farms for mass civet coffee production. The intimate cross-species bond between humans and civets is therefore an emergent phenomenon, one which highlights the ethical dilemma of perceived animal exploitation. 
Indeed, the civic community frequently condemns civic coffee, but as we will soon see, the pet trade is highly problematic for animal welfare as well. Second, Vickle's emotional expression of Flo's death is indicative of Indonesian culture. The public display of a video which features the process of life and death so intimately highlights the ways in which the West are devoid of connection to death and our own animality. Certainly, many scholars agree that the Eurocentric philosophy of physical and emotional separation from animals and the hidden nature of death is key to denying the vulnerabilities of human mortality. In her seminal work, Purity and Danger, Mary Douglas claims that all societies are built upon foundations of purity. Intimate relationships with animals therefore both identify with and challenge this theory. Whilst Vickle attempts at mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation may be viewed by some as disgusting, this act, along with his other close bodily contacts with her, does in fact present some danger. Civets are natural vectors of disease, including that which caused the 2002 outbreak of SARS in China. Yet purity is still presented in this video, albeit in alternative ways. In the purity of inextricable emotional distress, and the purity and dignity of Flo's burial, where she is placed at peace with the possessions of comfort. Again, we see the ways in which a civet is respected as a valued family member. Yet the loss of Flo is more than a loss of companionship. It is also a loss of personal identity. Whilst there is little doubt that the expression of grief was a true despair for her passing, the video focuses on Vickle's anguish, which pushes Flo to become the absent referent in the story of Vickle's visceral grief. The civet is lost to the human grief, which takes centre stage throughout. The sharing of the video acts as a tribute to Vickle's own identity, shared to his followers, which he gained on the back of his relationship to Flo. Interestingly, however, it is through the publication of the video to his more than 10,000 followers that Flo re-emerges as the focal individual, for it's for her that most of the fan base watch, and it's for her that they leave messages of respect. The tenderness and care that Vickle expresses throughout his interactions with Flo in her life and then in her death show a dedication to her well-being, albeit one which he did not appropriately deliver. Flo is not an animal companion within a multi-species relationship. For her adoption into the family as a valued family member, Flo assumed the role of human child rather than the status of pet, and it was this role that ultimately killed her. Where other animals, including other civets, feel featured in the film, they were mere background noise, naked and caged. Flo, however, dressed in diapers and human clothes until she was presumably too large to fit into children's attire, accompanied the family everywhere had free roam at the house, slept in human beds, ate human food, a lifestyle projected on social media as an indication of her care. Yet in denying Flo her civetness, her wildness, her species specific needs, Flo herself experienced deep loss of her intrinsic nature and her agency. She was unable to be self-determined to make her own choices or control the environment in any meaningful way. Most obvious in her obesity, Flo lost the ability to move, regulate her temperature and eventually breathe. A physical state which was enabled and exacerbated by the lifestyle imposed upon her for the comfort and fame of her human companion. Through Flo's story, we are also reminded that companion civets in general experience loss through their enrolment into human dominated landscapes as more than human companions. The selective breeding of civets has resulted in a change to their morphology and behavior so much so that companion civets now only tangentially resemble their wild heritage. Civet pet keeping is a very new phenomenon, so much so that they are neither wild nor domestic animals. Rather, they exist in the liminal space between these states, a space where they are both reliant upon, but resisting human control and domination. Stereotypic behavior and ill health are frequently observed as civets resist their captivity. In becoming what Donaldson and Kimlicka describe as animal citizens, civic companions may gain relative protection from hunting and civic coffee, for example, but the price they pay for citizenship is seen in the loss of their freedom and autonomy. Yet, yet the most severe form of lost freedom is experienced by the parents who create civets like Flo. 
those who themselves are too wild and too unpredictable to be a human's companion. Caged as machines for pet production, the parents and grandparents of civets like Flo are hidden behind the scenes from the community who claim to love them. Whilst the trade in wildlife is typically the focus of conservationists whose concern is to preserve a species, by looking closely at the lived experiences of individual relationships, we can best understand the underlying motivations and the cultural perspectives which contribute to a growing industry to help not only the species, but all of its members. Thank you very much. I look forward to your questions.